This video will help you figure out if an electric copying device is a good thing to have in your house and whether it can help relieve pain, improve sleep and ease off tense muscles. But firstly, you need to know this. Basically, there are two main types of copying. It's dry and wet copying. The difference between the two is whether you apply a liquid on your skin and whether you draw blood from the surface of your skin. In traditional cupping, they use flames, heating pads or special burning salt to create a vacuum so that the cups suck in the exposed area of your body. The difference with an electric cupping device is that it uses a pump to create a negative pressure inside. It also has a heating feature, which I will discuss later in the video. So the electric smart cup is slightly better than the traditional one because you have an option to regulate the pressure, which is very useful for beginners who fear cupping and for practitioners who prefer more intense cupping. Now, Let's talk about the benefits of cupping therapy and then I'm going to discuss the features of the cupping device and how to use it. The facts I'm going to share are not made up by me, it's what I found in scientific trials shared publicly that I will link in the description. What I found discussed in many trials is the fact that cupping therapy has a potential to relieve pain, especially in your back, shoulders and neck area, even the chronic pain. One study even found cupping therapy to be effective in reducing the fatigue syndrome in 91 participants after 10 sessions of cupping. Also, according to the research published in 2015, wet cupping is particularly good at reducing blood pressure for up to 4 weeks. I guess it has something to do with the fact that in traditional wet cupping therapy, you literally draw your blood by making incisions on your skin before applying cups. Another study that included 50 participants with chronic neck pain found that cupping therapy reduced pain and improved functioning and quality of life of those individuals. Okay, now let's talk about this particular device and what it's good for and what it's bad for. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say it's better for dry cupping. Because if you want to draw blood, you would have to use disposable cups every time to avoid infection. But you can still apply some water or essential oils on your skin as long as you don't have any incisions to draw blood. What's good about this device is that you can start from lower pressure mode to feel it on your skin and understand your pain tolerance towards this therapy. To do so, you need to power on the device, click on the pressure button, after which it will immediately jump to third gear. You need to click on the same button until you reach the first level. Navigate by the sound and light indicators. On lower pressure levels, it's best to put the cup on your skin while you lie horizontally, so you might need someone to help you. It's advised to have someone around because in case you feel it's too much pain for you, a person near you can immediately react and press the pause button. Usually after that, the cup slowly gets depressurized. Now, the hidden feature. It's there, as I think, to imitate the warm feeling you get from traditional cupping. But honestly, it's not critical to have it during the therapy. Also, it heats up to around 85 Fahrenheit on the third level of heating, so I wouldn't recommend you go any higher. Another thing that you need to know about this cupping device is that it has this thing in the center and because of that, it, it sucks in the skin in donut shape. Honestly, I don't think it matters much as long as the device pulls your skin up, which it does perfectly. Also, a really good benefit of this particular device is that it imitates pulsating cupping therapy, in which cups pull skin with pressure and periodically let it go rather than just statically pull the skin. It is good because the pulsating type of cupping is more effective than the traditional one, especially for pain relief. Now let's talk about what you shouldn't do with this cupping device. You shouldn't use it on your face, scalp, close to big veins and blood vessels, and it's better to consult your doctor before choosing where to apply it. Besides that, it's not really good if you want to slide it on your skin, though it might be possible if you use essential oils with it. Also, you may get bruises from this device, but if you don't, that's fine too. Consider this to be something similar to massage. It's just that during massage, a therapist 
presses on your skin and during cupping therapy your skin gets pulled by negative pressure. What it gives is better blood circulation in the affected areas, more relaxed muscles, which results in better mobility, better sleep and less pain. But please be aware that cupping therapy still lacks big scientific trials to consider this to be a 100% effective treatment with developed methods. So proceed with caution. And if you want to get this device for less than $20, check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.